Let's say that you are going to create a new RDS instance based on the MySQL engine. You're going to click on Create Database, choose MySQL, click on Next, choose Dev slash Test MySQL, which will allow us to use the RDS free usage tier. Click on Next. I'm going to choose the db.t2 micro, which is the smallest, and I'm going to choose a database instance identifier, which is just like the EC2 instance name, I'm going to choose my business DB as the instance identifier. Then I'm going to choose a master username, let's say root, type in the password for that master user, and then click next. I'm not going to choose anything here except the database name. I'm going to create a new database in the instance, call it store DB. I'm not going to choose an encryption. And notice here that AWS is going to automatically take backups of your RDS instance. This is specific for, if you are using MySQL, it's going to be for the NODB storage engine only. If you are using MyISAM, automatic backups are not going to be supported. AWS takes a backup on a daily basis, and you have here the option, choose the backup retention period, which basically means how long should Amazon RDS retain your backups, of course. A backup consumes space on AWS and you are going to be charged for this space consumption. So you will have to choose a period that is not too long nor too short so that you can optimize your costs as much as possible. And you can also choose the backup window, which is the period of time where your backup is going to be taken. Or you can leave it at no preference to let Amazon automatically choose that backup window for you. I'm going to click Create Database. Okay. The database instance has been created and I'm going to click on view DB instance details. It is now in the creation process and it might take up to several minutes before the creation process is over. Then RDS is going to create an initial backup for you from the RDS instance that has been just created. This will be the full backup and all subsequent backups that AWS takes for you are going to be incremental. This means that it is only going to take the difference that happened in the data. If I refresh the page now, the instance is available and you can start connecting to it. So in order to connect to it, I'll just have to copy the endpoint URL like this, go to my terminal, and depending on your preference, you can use any MySQL client to connect to this RDS instance. In this example, I am going to use the MySQL command line client, but you can use phpMyAdmin or MySQL Workbench or any client of your preference. So it's MySQL-U for the user, which is root, dash P to be asked for a password, dash H, and then I'm going to give it the full URL of the endpoint that I have just copied from Amazon RDS console. Click enter, enter the password that I have specified when creating the RDS instance, and now I'm connected to the instance. I'm going to use the database that I have created, which is StoreDB. And I'm going to seed this database with some data. So I'm going to create a table that is called customers. The statement is fairly simple. It's going to create a table that is called customers, contains four columns, an ID, first name, last name, and email. Then I'm going to add actual data to this table. So I'm going to insert two rows. So I have now seeded my database. I'm going to exit from the instance and get back to my AWS RDS management console. Now I'm going to take a snapshot for the database that I have just seeded. If you have a look here, I already have a snapshot that has been already created by AWS for me. This is the full backup of the instance. But now I want to take a manual snapshot. Since I have just seeded my table, I don't want to wait for Amazon RDS to take an automatic backup for me. I want to manually take a snapshot. So I'm going to go to snapshots and go to take snapshot. I'm going to choose the DB instance, which is my business DB. I'm going to enter a snapshot name. Let's say DB dash seeded to indicate that this snapshot has been taken just when the database was seeded with test data. And then I'm going to click take snapshot. Now the snapshot has appeared in the console. If I go to databases, go to my business DB, and let's refresh the page to see the new update. I'm going to see that my instance is being backed up. 
and this process may take from several minutes to several hours depending on the size of your database and the amount of data that has been added to it. Okay, after several minutes, the instance is available once more again. I'm gonna go to the terminal, clear the screen, and I'm gonna connect again to this instance, enter the password. And let's say that I'm going to do a destructive change to this database. Let's say that by accident, I have deleted or dropped a table. So let's first go to our store DB, ensure that our table contains data. So select asterisk from customers, which is our table. Okay, it does contain data. We have two customers with two emails. Now I'm going to make a destructive change to this table. I'm going to drop it all together by issuing drop table customers. Okay, so now if I try to select that data again, I'm gonna see that it has gone. But lucky enough, because I have already taken a backup of this RDS instance, I can restore this back. So first I'm gonna exit from the MySQL session, go back to my RDS management console and go to snapshots. I'm gonna choose the snapshot that I have just created, which is db-seated, and I'm going to go to actions, restore snapshot. And snapshots are a little different from the traditional MySQL backups that you may have taken before. RDS takes a full snapshot of the entire image of the database. The database is stored behind the scenes, of course, on an EC2 instance or a virtual machine on AWS servers. And when you take a snapshot, this snapshot takes the entire image of the machine with the database and the data that is inside it. So when you restore a snapshot, there is no means for you to restore it back to the instance that is already running. You will have to restore it to a new instance and afterwards you may delete the old one or you can leave both of them, it's up to you. So when I restore a DB instance, I'm going to enter the same details that I have entered when I first created the instance. So I'm gonna choose the instance class. Let's say I'm gonna again choose db.t2.micro and I still have the other options. I can, for example, choose multi-AZ deployment, change the storage class, and so on, but I'm gonna leave them at the defaults. And of course, you will have to enter a new database identifier. If you have already deleted the old database instance, you can enter the same name as before. But since I did not delete the old one, I'm gonna just enter my business DB2 to indicate that this is the second instance of my business DB. I'm gonna leave the same VPC, and again, it's gonna be publicly accessible and I'm gonna click restore DB instance. Okay, now I have a second instance in my console, which is my business DB2. I'm gonna click on this. And as you can see, it is in the process of creation. Again, it may take several minutes or more depending on the amount of data that is going to be restored. Backing up is gonna create a full backup again for your new RDS instance just the same as it did when you created the first one, modifying, and now the instance is available. Again, this process may take a long period of time till the database instance is available. Once it is, I'm gonna take, again, a copy of the endpoint, the new one that has been provided for me, go back to the terminal, clear the screen, and again, I'm going to issue my SQL-u root-p-h, and then I'm gonna paste the new database instance URL, Press enter, enter the password. It's gonna be the same password that I have created because the master username and password are stored inside the database itself. So when you restore the database into a new instance, the same user and the same password are going to be available for you. All right, now I'm inside, use store DB. Now let us check that our table has been retained and the data inside it are available again. So select asterisk, from the customer's table. All right, and we have our data back. Now let's exit from MySQL session, go back to our AWS Management Console, go to databases, and let's now that I want to delete the My Business DB, the old RDS instance that I have created, I'm gonna choose the instance from the console, go to Actions, and Delete. And when you delete an RDS instance, AWS prompts you to create a final snapshot of the database and to also retain or not retain automated backups. The backup that has been created for you when you started the instance the first time, in addition to any backups that have been created automatically by AWS. If you choose not to retain automatic backups, they are going to be deleted when you delete the RDS instance. 
However, you cannot delete them manually as we are going to see. So I'm going to opt not to create a final snapshot and not to retain the automatic backups to be deleted automatically by AWS. And I will have to click on, I acknowledge that upon in instance deletion, automatic backups, including system snapshots and point in time recovery will no longer be available, which means that I'm gonna lose all the data that is inside this RDS instance. To confirm this, I'm going to have to type delete me in this field, and then I'm gonna click delete. In a few moments, the database is going to be deleted from the console. If I go to snapshots, I'm gonna see that I still have the RDS snapshot that has been created for me when the RDS instance was created. It will be deleted shortly by AWS. But the snapshot that I have created manually, which is db seeded, will not going to be deleted automatically. I will have to delete it manually, or it is going to incur charges because it will be consuming space on AWS servers. So I'm going to go to db seeded, I'm going to go to actions, and I'm going to click delete snapshot. Delete, and now it has been deleted. And if I try to delete, those snapshots manually, I'm gonna see that the delete snapshot is dimmed. If I try this with the second one, like this, I'm gonna also see that the delete snapshot button is dimmed, and that is because AWS is going to automatically delete those snapshots since I have already deleted the RDS instances and I have opted not to retain the automatic backups that have been created for me.